How long has Adam been in this water? How is he not already dead from drowning? This, ladies and gentlemen, is a key. You won't know it's a key until much later in the movie when you've already forgotten whatever it was. Why did Adam get placed in water while Lawrence is sitting here dry as a bone? I went to bed in my shithole apartment and woke up in an actual shithole. Nobody would be cracking wise in this situation. What is he, Matthew Broderick? What they do, man. They kidnap you and drug you. Before you know it, you're lying in a bathtub and your kidneys are on eBay. Human organs have always been against eBay's terms of service agreement. I know this tape was protected from the water by the plastic baggie, but how did Jigsaw know the tape wouldn't be smashed between his body and the bottom of the tub? Or on the tile when he fell to the ground? What would happen if Adam and Lawrence never figured out how to get the tape player? I guess they just eventually die of starvation. But how long would Jigsaw have waited to get up from the floor and say, well, this is awkward. It played out much better in my head when I planned it. How did he know they wouldn't throw the tape in the tub on accident? Or somewhere else out of reach? What if Lawrence throws like a girl? Then what? Give me that. Adam is a little too helpful to the guy who's been challenged to kill him. Did he not really care where the tape started back up when he pushed play? Or is this a character rewinds tape and stops it at the perfect moment they were looking for in one try cliche? If you're Adam and you've just heard the message about Lawrence needing to kill you, why would you do this? Danny Glover isn't too old for this in this scene. Door was on a timer. It was unlocked until 3 o'clock. Wait, it... Not three o'clock right now, though, is it? The newspapers started calling him the Jigsaw Killer. And this kid has never heard of him? Like, ever? Technically speaking, he's not really a murderer. He never killed anyone. Um, no. Yeah, he's a murderer. By law. In, like, every state and every civilized country. And probably even Idaho. Plus, my wife has the car today. So. Right. The surgeon with this office and this home only has one car. This pen light has no discernible markings. And Lawrence would have to have a criminal record for them to match fingerprints, so how did the detectives figure out that this was his pen light? Is he the only guy in the area that uses a pen light? How did Lawrence even know it was his? Cops do not let recently exonerated suspects eavesdrop on official witness testimony. Jeez, a flashback within a flashback, and we're only 24 minutes in. Why did this chick get a video from Jigsaw and everyone else got audio tapes? You know what this scene needs? It needs a rapidly edited series of jump cuts shot with an artificially sped up camera rotating around the room to make you understand how completely messed up the situation is. How did she not hear him moaning or see him moving his head in time? And how does she remember him moaning and turning his head so that it's in her flashback and story? Or wait, are they saying she did hear him moan and didn't even flinch? Didn't even glance at him or hesitate or pause for even a second. The evil puppet killer said it was a dead body. Even if you would still stab him knowing that he was alive, doesn't the information itself come as a surprise worthy of a small pause? Most people are so ungrateful to be alive, but not you, not anymore. Ah, I see. He's just trying to help. He's seen V for Vendetta one too many times and he thinks torturing people actually sets them free. It's only 11.25 here, but then, in the same scene, after just a few minutes of dialogue and throwing rocks at the mirror, the time has jumped to 12.05 on the close-up. There's a piece of wood left in the frame of the mirror that's sticking out exactly in line with the camera in this shot. But then when we switch to the camera's view, which has some incredible wide-angle views, by the way, there's no piece of wood to be seen, even though it would definitely need to be there if the camera's able to see Dr. Gordon. Every possible angle has been pre-thought out. I... Except the part about how easily either of the tapes could have busted, or how hard it should have actually been to lasso the f***ing tape recorder. Would you like to see her? Wait, you were telling that story for an hour? Or did you tell it for a few minutes and then sit quietly for an hour and then out of the blue ask, would you like to see her? This article is about a boy who died in an explosion playing with goofy clay. This article is an ACLU story about people being followed by public and private agents. This article is also about the boy who died in the explosion due to goofy clay. Back to the ACLU again. And this is about nuclear missiles or something, and they involved Stanley Kubrick in it. Listen to this. There's never a point in the video when the camera moves like this, or is silent enough to isolate a fire alarm in the distance without other sounds interfering. Who said anything about a warrant? Who said anything about a warrant, cliche? In 20 seconds, the life of this man will be ended. Actually, an entire 60 seconds go by before Singh shoots the drills, which means the puzzle-making mastermind-killing genius can't estimate time for shit. Does Jigsaw have a constantly running fog machine in this hallway? Hey, neat trap. Why is this the only place in the building that has something like that rigged? I understand he probably had a vest on or something. Maybe he's supernatural, I don't f***ing know, but shouldn't the gunshot that dropped him to the ground at least have torn some holes in his robe? This was meant to receive calls, not make them. Yeah, but telephone law requires all phones be able to dial 911 regardless of their limitations. The super smart serial killer has every angle covered, except for decent audio. And for that matter, how does Lawrence just assume that the killer's microphone won't pick up whispering? <laughs> Thank you.
Maybe before you come up with your super sneaky plan to pretend to have him get poisoned by a cigarette, you could have made sure he wasn't the world's worst actor. I don't see how Jigsaw could have rigged something here that would create a successful electric shock. There doesn't appear to be anything that would complete the circuit. Couldn't they try cutting through the rusty ass pipes? How did Lawrence not hear this camera clicking? Or see Adam at this distance? Dial tone after the phone hangs up cliche. He's a tall black guy. He's got a scar around his neck. So when Lawrence told you about the tall black cop who got his throat cut, you didn't make any connection? There were two cigarettes in the box, and one was thrown to Adam during the fake death scene, but now there are two cigarettes on the floor. And these guys are f***ing masters at throwing photographs across the room without them tailing off or flying out of reach. How did they get this picture of Zepp peeking through the window when he only did that this afternoon and only Tap could have taken it? Wait, he's holding the wife and daughter captive in the doctor's own house? So he kidnapped them, tied them up, and then went and set up all this computer and camera equipment? In the doctor's house. I mean, even if this isn't the real Jigsaw, it's the real Jigsaw's plan. I'm very confused about why he would choose to do this. What if the doctor doesn't pay his Comcast bill? What if he has to dial up? I mean, this is a super rich doctor who's too cheap to buy his wife her own car. It's all right. I've called the police. Everything is okay. Dude, that is like almost the exact perfect opposite of the truth. Also, is it f***ing daylight right now? Was it not pitch black nighttime just four minutes ago when the killer and Danny Glover were driving to the torture shack? Awesome twist. Now, are we really supposed to believe that he didn't need to breathe for six hours? Or perhaps even more ridiculous that he was breathing the whole time, but neither of the prisoners ever noticed the slightest movement? An aging, coughing cancer patient manages to lie still for that length of time? Can I just not buy this for a second? Like, the whole reason why Lawrence is here is because he's supposedly cheating on his wife. However, Lawrence and Carla have not begun the affair yet. He says, I did not cheat on her! And we see the encounter in the hotel room where he tells her what the rules are for calling him and like she made a mistake, like a rookie mistake. What's wrong, Dr. Gordon? She even refers to him as Dr. Gordon instead of, you know, his first name. These people have not started a real affair yet. Now, maybe they stupidly flirted in front of Zepp or Jigsaw or whoever at the hospital. They would have had to specifically say in front of them tonight, for the very first time, we make love in a dirty hotel room. Sure hope no one evil is eavesdropping right now. But even if they did something stupid like that, then Jigsaw or Zepp or whoever would have still had to account for Adam. How did they know about Adam? By Adam's account, he's only been following Lawrence for a few days. They would have had to figure out Adam existed, figure out that he was the type of guy who needed to be taught a lesson too, and then rig the game on the fly to include him. Also, didn't he sort of miss the best action by choosing to fake die facing the kid instead of the doctor? I mean, he likes to watch victims, right? But he didn't even see the guy who cut his own foot off, which for a psycho killer has got to be like the best part. Key to that chain is in the bathtub. Oh, so the key was never going to be found anyway. How sporting of Jigsaw. How did he decide that Adam was the biggest piece of in the room? I mean, he practically drowns the guy, Adam's death allows Lawrence to live, and Jigsaw teases him at the end with a key that he could never retrieve. Photographers must be worse than Satan. You covered yourself in peanut butter and had a 15 hooker gangbang. You want to know how I got these scars? My father was a drinker and a fiend. Hey, Gipper! I have something for you, young man. Ooh, watch yourself, it's the claw! <laughs> Ooh, the claw's coming at you. Ooh, you're scared of the claw. Who are you? You know who I am. Stop the lies! You're a liar! You lie! You're a f***ing liar! Shut up! Throw me the player. No. You throw me your tape. In the way. Throw me the idol. No time to argue. Throw me the idol. I throw you the whip. I have to go and get help. I wish I knew how to quit you. What? Yes, Mr. Lowry. Carolyn? You're too late. So now, after all this time, you've decided to stop ignoring me.